Excellent. Uh, I have Abby Dahlman. Yep, here. Price Ehrlich. Here. Aaron Palin. Here. Howard Tritz. Here. Okay. Um, has everybody had a chance to review the letters? Um, and does somebody want to start the conversation? I feel like I always start and I know that I have to because I'm the chair, but sometimes I like it when other people start. So. Essentially, to give a little bit of background, um, in years past, we hardly ever had, it was really hard to get even a full commission appointed because we didn't have interest from the community. Um, and, and let alone have alternates. So that's, you know, this is kind of a new thing for us to have. Definitely, I would say this is the first time in all the years that I've been on here and maybe Howard too, that um, we're having to decide between people who wanna stay on and new applicants. So uh, it, I feel like it's kind of a tricky spot to be in and I don't really love that, that position, but um, I think we want to look at all four letters of interest, you know, objectively and kind of decide where we think or how we think the board should be structured and I guess go from there. So that's kind of the background. We have uh, two vacancies. One of them is an alternate and one of them is a regular. Um, and I, with thank you for pointing that out, Paul, because I think that um, right off the bat, I would love to move Aaron into a regular seat um, because Aaron's an alternate right now. So to me, it makes the most sense that we move existing people right away into the full full board voting board position, and then the two that we're appointing being uh, alternates, but. That's obviously open for discussion as well. How long has has Steve served on the board? Or is he new? I guess I wasn't. He's not new. Uh, he's, but it's it's so it's been, but it's only been a couple of years, maybe like okay. man, I should say only, but um, only been a couple of years. Um, he, maybe three. Yeah, he started out. Um, fairly quiet, but uh, has over the last year or two, you know, been pretty engaged. And um, I appreciate his perspective coming from his uh, background. Um, I just, I, I like when everybody's got all these different backgrounds that they can pull from. And so he's got that fire background and sometimes he has that perspective that helps us both with applications, uh, things that should be considered as well as um, planning, you know, doing like backcountry zoning. He brought up some really good points as far as that kind of stuff goes. And he's a good resource for us to ask questions and things like that too. I do know that um, one of our commissioners has an issue, a potential issue with him because he's technically a signer a sign off person for a referral agency so when an application comes to us and we have to refer them out to the different departments he's the one who signs off i personally don't see that as a conflict of interest because there's no personal gain or any kind of personal agenda or anything like that involved in any anything but um there's that yeah i know that like the easiest thing is just attendance right like you know has he consistently been coming for like the returning I I know Lupe is as new as I am too um so there really hasn't been much op opportunity to you know have a record um of attendance that sort of thing but it seems like Steve has regularly attended and all of that in the past few years or yeah he's had he's had really really um strong attendance i would say i think that the only time that steve hasn't participated um is is if there's been a work conflict so you know when he was away fighting fires but even then i think that um i don't really remember 
uh, him being absent very often. And, and usually, um, you know, it, it would only have been, the only times that I can remember, and maybe Paul and Heather um, and Howard can remember as well, but it seems like his attendance has been really strong. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, I, and, um, I, I believe you're right about him starting, you know, he started out kind of shy, but after he got his feet wet, uh, he has some pretty astounding things to bring up. And his uh, experience in the job he has and the experience and the, also the experiences other places has been really a benefit to me at any rate, and I think to the county. I like the idea of having someone from the fire community represented. Because like you said, he in the backcountry zone discussion, he brought up some things that we would never even think of. And I think that's, I haven't been around, but I, I can imagine that's gonna be true for any discussion, just because they have a different lens to view everything through and a different rules to, a set of rules to follow, but that are very important, so. Absolutely. But you, if we um, put Aaron into a full position, would that mean bringing Mr. Boyle back as the alternate or? I suppose so, yeah. Okay. That, I mean, if he stays, should I just stay? <laughs> I mean, it's something we can continue talking about. I mean, I've been, um, obviously we're going to make a recommendation to the commissioners and I guess I would suggest that we make maybe a couple, um, if, if everybody here is, is feeling along those same lines, um, as Bryce and, and I, on um, on Steve, I think we're going to need a backup because I'm not sure if, um, Commissioner Mudge will go along with that or not. So we'll just have to see. Um, but I'd, I'd like to have, you know, maybe two recommendations that this is, this is why we fully support this. And then, but if you see an, uh, a problem with that, this is our second choice, something along those lines. Um, so we could have a couple of different scenarios play out. Um, I think, you know, to Bryce's point is something I, while he was talking, I remember too, is there's a couple of uh, CUP applications that even though we don't have to do with fire code, it was really interesting for him to bring up and remind the applicant at the hearing of like, hey, remember that you need to do this one thing. And that helped them then understand something that ended up having to do with the application. Um, so it just has been super helpful. Um, I think the problem is that all of the, all of the letters of interest here, I can see really great strong suits from everybody who's who's shown interest in in applying for the planning commission so i think you know just like everybody here has pulls in different um, perspectives i can see those different perspectives with everybody here um but i do i do really enjoy having that fire piece um just where we live um and lupe has been i I'll be completely honest, when he first was brought on, I was pretty skeptical just because of his HMI uh, job as to how many trips he'd have to be on and miss. Um, but he's been really, really involved. I think he's only had to miss one and it was kind of a last minute meeting, I think, that he missed. Um, so he's been super involved too. And I hate to say, hey, you were on here for four months, thank you. <laughs> so it's just such a tough position for us, I think, to be in right now. I don't. Well, and maybe it's talk? just an opportunity to really like dial in that. I think it's great that it was brought up that they needed to be renewed the terms. Like, so just dialing in the process so that it's the same every time. Cause this is such a, you know, if this is one of the first times that there's been multiple applicants, you know, it's yeah. a good time to, to start fresh. Have, has anyone been interviewed? The other two folks? Just the no. letters of interest. Yeah, nobody did any interviews. Okay. No. Okay. Um, do 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 people know the other two applicants? I know I know Jason just from around town, and I mean it's hard because, like you said, we're in a tough spot. But that he's a really strong candidate, mm -hmm. being involved with the LLC, EDC, and then also being a small business owner in town. I think that's a great perspective to have. Um, I work with Jason pretty closely on the EDC and um, in on a couple of uh, other things through the small business community. And yeah, I agree. I mean, 
he, he was one of the ones that reached out to me and said, are there vacancies? And I thought there weren't. So I told him no. And then when I realized that we were asking for additional applications, then I reached back out and said, yeah, go ahead and submit your letter of interest. Um, he has become really active. Um, he is currently, um, he, he can't, he lives in the county, so he can't be on the city planning and zoning, but he did uh, just recently sign up to be on their committee to do some work on the comp plan research for the city's uh, dive into that. So he's involved for sure, um, which is nice. And unfortunately, I think this is, is kind of, I guess the process that the commissioners are saying we are going to, this is just gonna be how it is, um, that anytime there's vacancies, if people want to renew, they can submit their letters, but they're going to submit them with everybody else, and then they just pick the two best candidates um, out of those out of that group. So here we are. <laughs> so will the board interview all of everyone, or I don't think they'll do interviews. I think they okay. just. I, I think that they we did that that the last time with you guys because there were mm -hmm. so many of you and we had so many board seats to um, fill or I guess they're not boards, but uh, anyway, um, positions to fill. Um, but generally it's been letters of interest. The planning commission makes their recommendation to county commissioners and then county commissioners make their decision based on our recommendation. It's just generally how it's worked in the past. These are uh, three year terms for both this alternate and regular position basically means they'll expire December 30th or 31st, 2024. Well, and I also think it'll be important for each of you to um, get the list of, of when your appointment expires, because I think that was decided this year, but you know, I, I wasn't aware of a lot of those dates. So um, I, will, I will make sure that you all get a list of what the appointments and, and um, expiration dates are since we are doing a little bit, or we are definitely doing a new process because in the past, you know, it's been exactly like we, we described if, um, you know, and there's always been, I think a benefit and a value thought in, in the seasoned veteran um, on the planning commission because I think it takes some time and some traction to um, really kind of get in the groove. And um, so I think there's always been some recognized value in um, when we have members that, um, you know, kind of grown in their capacity and they want to continue on, um, it, you know, that's something that we've welcomed. So it's a little bit new approach, but it also has you know, the, the opportunity for new engagement, which could be equally beneficial, but, um, so anyway, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm digressing a little bit, but um, I would be happy to share the list with you so that you can anticipate what those dates are for everyone that's, that's here with us now. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, I mean, to that point, I think that that was another reason that I had just assumed we were keeping Steve and Lupe because we had just done this. It just felt like, you know, six months prior to. Um, so I didn't realize anybody was coming up so quickly. Um, and I think, you know, that's, that's where it's tough for me because I think that I, I really love the makeup of the board right now, of the planning commission right now, because there is a good mix of people who have been on for a bit and then brand new blood to help, um, you know, uh, you know, with new perspectives. So it's, it's, to me, it's a really great mix of, of, of folks. Um, not to say that it would, you know, shift too much with two brand new people. Um, but I think if, you know, if I, if I had to pick right this minute, I think I would, I would opt to keep, you know, to recommend that we keep the two that are asking to renew because I like Steve's background in the fire and then Lupe has only been on a few months and I'd like to give him the opportunity to serve, serve for a longer term if that's what he's open to. Um, and then my next choice 
personally would probably be Jason. Um, yeah, what are other people's thoughts on that? You know, I gotta be honest, I was under the assumption for some reason that that was kind of what we were gonna do as well, um, was just kind of if they were interested, allow them to serve another term. So I'm glad to hear that that's your recommendation because that's kind of where I was leaning as well. Um, and yeah, I like I if, the, if the commissioners had a problem because it seemed like that's, I was, ho I was hoping they would have maybe guidance on what they were expecting from us. I mean, I even emailed Ann about like, what, how are we gonna go about this, you know? Um, so in, in, la in lieu of that, I think I like your recommendation. I would back that. I don't think I, at least I haven't seen anything that wouldn't recommend them continuing. And that's what's hard for me right now. Um, I don't, I just don't think there's a leg to stand on to not offer them the option to continue if they want to. But I also kind of joined when they did, so or at least when Lupe did. Um, yeah, so it just, it feels a little weird. <laughs> yeah. I think it would, I mean, I, I, I couldn't speak to either Jason or Max without, you know, having a con like having a conversation or something with them you know like the the letters were 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 fine but you know like they're not going to tell you the ins and outs like i've like of having a conversation or just being able to ask some basic questions around thoughts around development and um those sorts of things so um, i think max might be involved in like a police justice organization thing here in town. I feel like I've seen his name around before. Um, going the to- Lake County Law Enforcement Community Board. Yeah. That's what it says. I think that might be the same person. At least I recognize the name. So just as a, a pull in point for some community involvement. Um, and then I know Jill more than I know Jason. But, and by no, I mean, they help me with my dog food. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> my my dog goes to Grateful Paws every Monday. I mean, <laughs> they know. They know. Well, that is a good point. It's two small business owners, not just one, in in two yeah. very different realms too. So, um, I know I can take my wife's opinion into consideration, and she has good opinions. So. I bet her, I bet Jill has some good things that she's going to impart on Jason too. Yeah, I think it's tough. The letters were short and to the point and they each, I mean, when they kind of both touch on smart growth and development and how we're kind of at a turning point and, but I don't. But neither really say how they feel about being at the turning point or how they would, <laughs> you know, yeah. which, you know, I don't, I don't. I don't mean to be overly critical, but it the you know that's that's the next question is, and you know what do you want to see Lake County be in ten years? Like, yeah. um, so in absence of that, like I don't really know. And 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 I agree with Heather and Bryce. Like I, I think Steve and Lupe have have both done, you know, great work and. Um, you know, I think it would, it, it would, it would be an unfortunate if, if either were, I think if, if it changed right now, just cause we just started, I feel. I think that's my core feeling as well. Heather, I am, um, I, I agree with Abby and, and also Aaron, um, you know, if you want to be on the board, you have really got to say, why do I want to be on this board? What, what do I want this board to accomplish? Mm -hmm. um, I'm here because this is what I would like to see. And I think the method we've been using for years has worked fairly well. And um, uh, of course, you know, we can always look at alternates also. Well, I and, think these would be alternates, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I, I get why they would want to do this, you know, like, let's say, 
all of us have been on this board or on this commission for 15 years, then maybe it's time for a few of us to cycle out. So I understand why they're why the process is what it is. I think it just makes it extremely uncomfortable when you have two fair, well, Steve's not that new, but he's still new-ish. I mean, unfortunately, as you all will learn, things don't necessarily happen that quickly in this realm. So it still feels new that Steve's been in here, um, but while he's been here has delivered some really great feedback and, and perspective. Um, Lupe being brand new, it's just hard to, for me to justify, oh, we do need to cycle out and get some new blood because neither neither of those feel like we're in a stagnant stagnant place. Um, so I think that, although I understand that that's kind of the the county's policy for replacing board members on any of these you know commissions or committees or or whatever, um, I understand the reasoning behind it. I think that it just you know makes it difficult to make these decisions. Um, but you know, I I think that it's similar to right a big corporation who has to hire, and a lot of times they're going to hire within. They have to post the job, but they're going to hire within. And I I guess I just liken it to that that I don't think it's going to be super strange for us to say, well, we want to keep the two that want to stay on the board, and here's why, and you know, and and we feel like both of them bring these aspects, and and um, you know, Lupe hasn't necessarily had a chance. We haven't really even had real applications since you guys have all been on yet. So um, that would be my reasoning for him. And and we saw um, merit in appointing him six, eight, well, I guess it's almost, it's been a while now, but however long ago. So why not? Yeah. So why not keep him on so that he can try out a few applications? Um, and then I think, I do think we'll have to spell out some good detail as to why we're recommending Steve um, be on there for that perspective and that we don't feel like there's a conflict of interest there. Um, and then give them a backup, you know, if they don't, if they don't agree with that decision or that recommendation. So you're thinking Steve and Lupe as regular and alternate in the current positions that they're currently in. I think so. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. I agree. Do you want to try and come up with an alternate um, choice? And I, I would also encourage um, whether we do it now or um, we work as staff with, with you, Heather, uh, or via offline through a consensus on email, you know, just, just the basis of that recommendation, you know, not so that, that when staff, so typically when we have a recommendation like this, staff draws it up, writes it up, and then delivers it to the board. And so I just want to make sure that we're, we, accurately and intentionally um, deliver your message since since there is potentially room for you know um, uh, you know not I don't want to say conflict but room for you know discussion so I just want to make sure that we also make a plan um, to either do that now or discuss how we'll formulate that so that we make sure that staff delivers that message accurately. Yeah, and I, I mean, either way is fine with me personally. Um, and if you wanted to send out your drafted version of that and to all of us, and we can provide you with feedback. Um, if everybody feels like they can give and feedback fairly quickly, I think that seems okay. You know, the, uh, this is being kind of imposed on us because uh, as Heather, as you've already mentioned, this is the first time that we've ever done this. Um, it's kind of a nice problem to have on one hand. On the other hand, um, rotating through a lot of planning commissioners has its own problems as well, because it takes a couple of years for a planning commissioner to really get into the swing of it. Um, and we, we can look at Steve and say that's exactly what happened. And I suspect it'll happen to Lupe as well. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the fact that the board wants to win the when the terms expire, the board wants to re-advertise. I think that there's a disadvantage to that as well as an advantage. 
Right, and and I would also offer that that everyone that we are considering, right, you know, with the first recommendation that you have, has been through the full training that we facilitated, um, and there's value in that too, um, because we've gone through seating this board as a board that would move forward um, for a period of time, and and have made that investment in time and, and training. Yeah, I was thinking in regards to that and with Lupe's case, like like you said, Heather, we found him, you know, we appointed him on his merits eight months ago and we really haven't had a chance to see the benefits of that. I mean, he represents a community that was underrepresented in this board beforehand. So I think it's beneficial to keep him on because we haven't really given him a chance, really. I mean, we've talked about one really core issue, so. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, we're only just, as I was talking to Ann earlier today, we are going to have a pretty interesting summer. So everybody get ready. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, unfortunately, Lupe hasn't had a chance to be a part of any of those applications or participate in any of that. And I totally agree. I mean, I think the the merits and, and reasons for appointing him prior were um, and are still completely relevant. Um, and actually haven't been utilized to, to this point. So it seems silly for, for sure. That one seems really easy for me to say that doesn't make sense um, to appoint a planning commission member and within a year say we're replacing you. Um, so I, I feel like that's a pretty easy. Um, so I don't know if we want to, uh, you know, I don't know how to handle if we just want to have staff write us up a, a recommendation on those two um, and why we feel those two should remain on the board um, and then say, but if you feel the, you know, need to, if, if, if bringing another person in our first choice would be, and I don't know if we want to choose that between the two, or if we want to say, we, I mean, to Abby's point, or if we'd want us to say, Hey, we want to be able to set up, conversations with them or, you know, I don't know, what are people's thoughts on offering a second recommendation or do we just say, this is our recommendation? I think the fairest way to go would be to have a conversation with each because it doesn't sound like anyone really knows Max, but a couple people know Jason. Yeah. I would just offer too that there was, there's one other recommendation um, aside, from, you know, keeping this whole same um, kind of idea, and that would be as a second option to uh, recommend Aaron move up to voting member and Steve take an alternate position. So I think that's that that is still keeping in line. So I just wanted to volley that back out there for discussion. Yeah. yeah. So Steve is the fire code referring agent. Is that the problem? And then does he originate the code or does he just honor the states or states code? No, the code is, is, this, um, is the international fire code. Um, and it gets adopted separately from the international building code, uh, which our department administers. So, um, uh, pretty much every, every building that gets built in Lake County, whether it's the city or the county, has to go through review by him. And every time we have a development application, it also goes through his office. And, and the outcomes of those, just, just so, you know, I, at least during my time um, with the county, those, those have never resulted in denials from him. They, they result in recommendations by which an application needs to meet the code. So like on a building permit application, um, and we find it more in commercial endeavors, you know, sometimes the design doesn't support the IFC. And so he'll say, you need to consider having an additional water source or whatever it is, or sprinkling um, you know, be, based on the code, this type of construction with this kind of occupancy must be sprinkled. Um, so it, those are the, the level of kind of responses that we get. And then when we send a, a development application out to stakeholders to give us staff um, 
recommendations, considerations, concerns. So he might come back and say, we really want you to consider uh, fire mitigation purposes uh, or practices in this area. And maybe you need to have a fire mitigation plan. Um, so that's kind of the level of, of engagement with him. It's not typically he has the power to just say denied. Um, and just, so just a, and that might be very remedial and everybody might have already understood that, but I just thought maybe there was some merit in just kind of explaining kind of how his involvement, you know, is, is part of the process. Yeah, because if it's the IFC, it has very little, whoever it goes to is following that. They're not following their own whims. And so I don't really see. Well, and it's funny, so much. yeah, to, to that point, I think it's funny because when I've thought about um, in the past when we've had people on, on the commission, it's rarely been those those commissioners that pose a problem. It's actually been general community members that are super passionate about Leadville looking a certain way or being a certain way and wanting to deny an application without meeting the parameters that we're allowed to follow. And so they'll make comments and or say no to applications without having a basis to do it on. Whereas like somebody was like Steve knows, well, sorry, it has to be within this or not. And that's our basis. So somebody like him has been super easy. Whereas sometimes it really is um, conditioning your um, newer members um, and or community members that the reason we're on here is because we're super passionate about Leadville looking a certain way. And, and that's something that will help us develop code and develop plans. But when you're reviewing applications, we're still limited to what's currently written in the code and what our current comprehensive plan shows. Um, and that sometimes actually has been harder with, um, with other folks. So it's just funny because I feel like the conflicts actually haven't necessarily occurred with somebody on a referral agency so much as um, it has with, with others. So it's just interesting. Yeah. Heather, I um, um, think it's really important. I think, I think it was Abby brought that up that we, you know, talk to these people, uh, review them, just like we did you and I and Sarah uh, not too not too long ago, and we got, you know, we got some pretty good people out of that. We got Abby and Bryce and Aaron, and and uh, it's it's turning out very good. But it's hard to really recommend somebody without talking with them, actually. So I think that's important that however we decide to go about the, the logistics of doing this, that we ought to get the opportunity to talk in person. Now, do we want to do that prior to deciding to recommend our two existing? Um, or do we want to recommend our two existing and uh, then say, if that's not, then we want to have interviews with the other two candidates? Um, or what are, what are people's thoughts? I mean, I'm open to all of the things. Well, I would go to recommend for the way it is right now with the two existing. That's my thought. I mean, I think you can, yeah, I think you can say like, you know, there's a positive track record here. So, so you know, we feel good about the current makeup of the board and, and would like to see these two um, individuals continue in their position. Um, um, you know, I, but I do think it's, it's, yeah, it's hard to kind of weigh the merits of the other two folks. Uh, until you can't speak to them. So I don't know if that kind of makes it a little muddy how I put it, cause it's kind of towing the line on both sides. But I, you know, I, I do think that it'd be worthwhile for Steve and Lupe to continue to be on. Yeah, and I think that if we, uh, if the consensus here is, and I don't, you know, want to make sure everybody feels this way, but if everybody feels like regardless of any kind of interview outcome of Max and Jason, we would want, our, our first recommendation is gonna be that Lupe and Steve continue. 
then we just make that recommendation. Um, and uh, then we can also point out that, you know, if for some reason that recommendation isn't accepted, we would want to take a little bit of time and, well, we'd want them to appoint at least, you know, if they're going to appoint only one of them, we'd want them to move forward with that appointment. My concern right now is that we're moving, we're like Steve and Lupe both have voted on several applications or several uh, meeting, not applications, but, you know, several items in meetings up to this point, and they technically haven't been appointed to the commission since January. Um, so that's, problematic to me. So I like to go to the commissioners and say, hey, here's our recommendation. If either of these candidates don't get appointed, we would want you to appoint the other candidate. And um, that way we'd at least be moving forward with a full board and we would have just an alternate position that's left vacant um, that we can then say, then we would like to take some time with that alternate position to do interviews and choose our next recommendation. Um, what do people think about that? I think that's a great point I never even thought about is that these two members have been <clears throat> not only voting, but they've been kind of integral parts of the conversation on these ongoing projects we have. So just for continuity's sake, I think, I really think that the fairest thing to do would be to appoint them. And then if there's an objection there, interview, you know, cross the bridge if we come to it. Just the, but yeah, they, the fact that they've been in on these conversations that are ongoing is kind of reason enough to keep them going. Yeah, and quite honestly, I don't think either of them knew that they hadn't been reappointed I until did. this all came up. So it's kind of a bummer in the way it all went down. But um, okay, and so everybody feels good about that, that okay. um, plan that we kind of make that recommendation and ask them to appoint both. Um, and if they're not willing to appoint both, at least appoint one and come back to us to interview for the other. Well, and, and I think that everybody brought up a really good point that I, and I will write this out and send it out for edit, but also that in light of, of you know, um, the new process this year and making sure that in future years, so, so we could be really well poised for expiration next year, knowing that this is um, the new process and the expectation, but in light of not really, you know, all being on the same page with this new process this year, and I'll try to um, come up with a way to say that a little bit more eloquently than that. But um, you know, a suggestion of can let, let's let's keep let's keep things status quo. We recognize. Um, you know, this new process and we'll be very mindful in putting it and in, in being prepared for it because we can prepare for it at the end of next of this year um, so that we don't are in the same kind of position again. Agreed. Yeah. We've also had nothing negative to say about either of the sitting members. I mean, this entire conversation is us, I think, trying to figure out how to yeah, we just, there's nothing negative to say about either of them up to this point on the board. Yeah, agreed. Well, cool. And if you don't mind putting that together and just shooting it out to us on email, um, we can all get back to you quickly with any edits. And then if everything, everybody's cool with that, we can send it on to the commissioners for, for them to discuss at their next meeting. Can I just ask if I get bumped around and someone lets me know? <laughs> so, <we don't laughs> so I don't get confused. <laughs> yeah, no, we would definitely know on the next one anyway. Um, <laughs> so, and, you know, to that point, if, if we keep it the way it is, you're comfortable just remaining an alternate. But if Steve doesn't get appointed, are you comfortable moving into that regular position? If you guys are comfortable with me moving there, yeah. Yes, we are. It feels weird speaking for myself, but yes, <laughs> if you guys. I mean, it's more about you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, cool. Well, thank you guys for taking some time on a Thursday afternoon to go over this. Does anybody have any other thoughts or questions or things? It's only Tuesday. 
Oh, it's Tuesday. <laughs> I don't even know. <sighs> You're in for a long week. <clears throat> I know I am. Well, I guess I'll see you all on um, Monday, right? Monday. Is anyone going to the deed restricted thing? Is that something? Oh yeah, that's Thursday. Oh yeah, that's Thursday. So yeah. yeah, it's a Thursday at six, and if, if anybody wants um, doesn't have the um, meeting details, I'm happy to send it over. I am presenting on on that um, discussion along with Paul Anderson, um, Mayor Lobby, and um, Michael Yerman, um, who is a deed restriction expert. Um, so um, yeah, we will just be bringing you know just that basic. Um, tool forward for discussion and just basically it's just to kind of um, build the awareness of it and and where it is in the project I mean we're still we're probably about midway through the research and development and it will be um, then what we're going to be doing is bringing forth to everyone um, we need the guidelines so the driving principles of what we want within this community, you know, who who we would want these uh, deed restrictions to serve, um, and so you know, and and, and um, there's different aspects of that. So we definitely will need input from everyone to make sure that those those guidelines are um, right and dialed in for this community, and then that tool will be ready for. And, and maybe potentially at your disposal for um, when a development, we can find a, a, a basis to ask a development to uh, participate in some kind of units or um, project that can, that can help serve that need, that housing need that exists in the community. Just let me know if anybody wants something on that. Heather, did you just want me to just, do a quick what's coming up. Sure, yeah. And everybody probably wants to get going, but um, I, um, so we have um, several CUPs. We have a glamping campground that's in completeness review right now. We have a um, group camp, um, backcountry hut that's in um, review right now by one of your members, Bryce. Um, we have a, a Taco Bell which is going to be a minor subdivision, site plan review and conditional use permit. We have a right of way vacation and we have a fire facility CUP. So within the next uh, couple meetings, um, you're gonna have, starting, starting this, the second meeting in May, we're gonna start hitting you with all those development applications. I did receive back comments. I think everybody's probably, I think everybody got copied on them um, from the questionnaire on backcountry. So um, if you haven't seen one of those responses, or if you, I, I'm just making sure that they've copied Heather on them as well. So I was thinking that would be kind of our talking piece on the next agenda, uh, first agenda in May, or actually next week, sorry, next week. Monday. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm thinking this is <laughs> this is a regular meeting. Sorry. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Anybody else? All good. All right. I'm just going to pretend I heard motions to adjourn. And do I need to pretend? So I'm moved. Actually get... <laughs> I feel like Bryce just seconded. All in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank Have you guys. Have a really good night. All right. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.